Hello friends and welcome to a beautiful day in the Great Smoky Mountains. I'm here at the start of the Great Smoky Arts and Crafts community. This is a eight mile stretch, somewhere near eight miles, of many shops and small businesses, all dedicated to a craft of a certain type, different types. There's woodworking and glass and leather and all sorts of things, painting. We're gonna go check out some of these shops today. There's so many, we're not gonna have time to go to all of them, but there's a couple special stops that I wanna make while we're here. Welcome, friends. Right across the way from the sign, inviting you to the arts and crafts community is one of the shopping centers with several artists in it. Let's go check it out. Just in this first shopping center, there's pottery and baskets and a furniture maker that looks like old whiskey barrels turned into furniture. There's shops like this all over the place. I was just driving through here, I noticed maybe a hundred different types of shops like this. This is really cool. It's cool, there's a lot of American flag themed wood items here. It's neat. Of course, bear things too. Make it away. How long did it take you to make one of these? Five hours. Wow, cool. I grind all this in by hand. That's been before the ground. Huh. Cool. I grind them down and then sand them, burn them. Then we'll get the blue and the stars put on. Well, this midnight lighter wood was awesome. Robert and his wife, Regina, she, they're really cool. They made some really cool products in there. See, this is why Everyone should use their talents the best you can out there. They just came up with some cool idea to make these wooden flags and other wooden items, of course, and they can't keep them on the shelves. If you have an idea, you should act on that. Louis Pottery. Well, hey, Bear. There's a lot of the same type items, just different patinas on them. Great idea. Pottery store was really cool. I popped over here to the next shopping center. It's right across the street from the sign. And it looks like there's a lot of stuff going on. So let's go check out the candle maker. Okay, I thought this was gonna be like your normal Yankee candle style candles. These are amazing candles. These are like shaped like all sorts of things. How oh, cool. That's so many things, how cool. Jesus candle. <laughs> of course, there's bears. I'm just right back here. Massive amount of bear candles. <laughs> Just a bear cooking breakfast with eggs on his head. This is a cool store. They have all these candles broken down into sections like here's the Halloween section, the bear section as you saw, got a Christmas section over here as well, and then just animals and random things. <laughs> Mushrooms and another whole room of more candles. Wow! <laughs> Owls. Let's say, for instance, you were interested in buying this white owl. It's only $28.95. I thought it'd be way more than that. One of these smaller owls here, this is $9.95. So, you know, for a piece of art that's pretty cool, you could get it for pretty cheap. This is really neat. Ladybug, $4.95. Cool. <laughs> I like these. I like these dudes, it's funny. These are the only normal candles I've seen in the whole place. St. Patrick's Day pipes. <laughs> well, I did not pick up a candle, but it is good to know that they will not melt in your car. What a cool store. 
I wasn't expecting that to be so cool. Oh, it smells awesome in here. Hello. Lots of leather. It smells so good in here. The gal working said she can't even smell it anymore, but I can imagine that. It's like overwhelming though. Kind of like when you walk into a candle shop and you're overwhelmed by the smell of candles. It's like this, just leather. Lots of overwhelming leather. Well, this gentleman came in in his leathers, obviously riding a bike, needed some help, and they're helping him out, like fix his outfit. Cool, they do custom leather work here. Neat shop. Look at these tiny belts. Never seen one that small. It's tiny. And never seen them that big. Good grief. This belt is touching the ground, and it is taller than me. This has got to be like six and a half feet tall. It's only $28. Why do you need a six and a half foot long belt? Miscellaneous leather. That feels so nice. It feels so soft. Wow. Persons, of course, persons. Big holster. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. I love all that leather work. Although I'm not in the market for any leather at the moment, my buddy John made me this wallet. He made an Instagram video about it. I never included it on my YouTube video, I don't believe, but check that out. See the, the hand? He made this, it's an identical copy, minus the artwork, of the old wallet that I had that fell apart. I've been wearing a chain wallet for like 25 years and got a new one. Thanks again, John. Great gift. Why is there Disney stuff here? Let's check out the candy store. All the candy. Chocolate Luca, I want to go watch you play in Charlie. See how social media. They make a lot of this stuff here. I've never seen coconut brittle before. Definitely getting some. I did pick up the coconut brittle and got a couple of these honey sticks. I love these honey sticks. These are cherry. Impressive woodworking shop back here. Got everything. Some fine woodworking in here. I like that owl. I love woodworking. I grew up with a grandfather and a dad that woodworked at a nice shop, so I had some experience with it even as a young man attracted to cool woodworking like that. I appreciate it. Very nice shop. Next stop is the Arts and Crafts Village. Here we have several shops in this complex. Looks like a leather shop back here behind me. Uh, fruits and jams. Cherries. It says so, so very cherry. And Let's make some other things. So let's get started. How about some pottery? Well, hey, buddy. Wow. Hmm, good idea. Smells nice. Come on in, we got products for men too. All right, well it smells nice in here. Yeah. I wonder what farm products were. Well, it's a goat farm and they make goat milk and stuff like that there, but they also make soaps and other goat products, lotions and things as well. Pretty cool, I might pick up a soap. I wish you could smell it, it smells so good. I'm gonna get the patchouli. 
Hello. They got men's shaving kits here. How cool. Uh, I'm nervous about that straight Let's razor though. So, I love that patchouli smell. Pet barn. I don't have any pets, but there's the pet barn. So very cherry. Gotta go into the cherry store. Hello. Friends, you may know, cherries are my favorite food and pistachios. I like pistachios too. But this store is all cherries, everything in it, cherries, as I assumed, but they have more than what I thought. Cherry filling, cherry barbecue sauce, cherry salsa, chocolate covered cherry coffee, cherry jelly, and tons of other cherry stuff. This is great. This is not cherry. Oh, those look good. Cherry balsamic vinegar. Wow. Check this out. It's a cherry pit pack. Put it in the microwave. Heats up. Awesome. And hand warmers. I had no idea. Cool. <laughs> that is such a cool idea. Yeah. You can put it in the freezer. It stays cold too. I love the cherry store. I didn't pick anything up though. I don't want to get too sugared out. I already got some sugary stuff. Cool store. Ninety percent of everything in this store is locally Native American made. That is very cool. Dream catches. That is a cool knife. I'm not really into knives, but that's pretty sharp. Candles. And bears. Kinda want that t-shirt. Watercolors. I like watercolor. Grandparents and great aunts and uncles all down my. Well, did anyone explain to you about what the arts and crafts community is? But yep, just go around and you'll find a lot. So there's a lot of that that I do. Use I'm taking out paint here because huh. I need to put in say a stem and I don't want to draw a stem in there so and you kind of see where it's coming out yeah. you're lifting paint i have never tried that before wow so something like that then i'll go back and put like a shadow on one side of it wow this is some crazy paper that's newest thing in watercolor it's called mineral paper oh paints have been made out of minerals for years and now they've started making paper, which means it's made out of rocks. Here's a piece right here. Feel how that feels. It's a little bit smooth, but not yes. really. I can feel the grit in it. Yeah, it feels really Maybe smooth. Maybe because I'm used to it. Yeah. Well, Jan Pastos Watercolor Shop is my favorite so far. She was so cool and informative and told me all about the trail. Gave me some information that I did not know. So if you look at the map, all the red flags on there are artisans that are actually making their own things. Some shops are just you know, commercial shops and you can buy trinkets and things in them, but all those red flags are actual artists. Some other things she told me about it too. As you'll see on the map, it is a big loop and some people call this the craft loop or the Gatlinburg craft loop. It is the arts and crafts community though. And the reason it's called the arts and crafts community is because back in the thirties, People were really intrigued by the mountain people in this part of Tennessee. The language was different, the, the activities that they did were different. They were all Scotch-Irish. That's my heritage. So I'm a little more interested in this now. This is a cool part of the world. Many, many years ago, the Scotch-Irish settled this area. 
And because it was so secluded and out in the mountains away from Gatlinburg, but pretty close to Gatlinburg, when people visited there, they would make the short drive out here to this part of the mountains and want to see what was going on and how these Scotch-Irish people lived. Eventually, they started bringing out audio recorders and video recorders to see what the, the people sounded like and what the songs sounded like and the activities that they were taking part in. The things that they made were really of interest to the people out here traveling. So eventually, in the 1930s, a group of eight families got together that lived on this loop and formed a what is now a nonprofit which helps support other artists along this this roadway. And through here there's nothing really fancy, there's no big fancy houses, but this is where the mountain people lived and a lot of the properties are still here and a lot of the families are still in this area. It's a, a really cool part of the world. One place you must stop when you're here visiting is the Glade Soda Fountain. I made a video just about this place a couple months ago because it's so good. This is the best ice cream soda fountain that I have been to anywhere in this area. Hey, Abby. <laughs> Let's go get some. And I'm back. Love this place. Yes. Cherry ice cream soda. Wow. Cherry soda with ice cream. Mm. I love cherries. Uh, the cherry shop was really cool. Yes, yeah, are. that place is cool. Thanks, Abby. You're welcome. See ya. <laughs> this is so good. A real soda with ice cream in it. Uh, it's awesome. I didn't have the ice cream last time. I just had the soda. This is even better. If you're looking for the glazed soda fountain. It's right here in the Morning Mist Village. Plenty of other artists here too, but we're gonna make our way down the road and check out some more artists. Some Waterding, cool. More woodwork. Nice. Very cool. Tons of Christmas ornaments. Wow. A lot of CNC machine or laser etching. Uh, items in here. This is pretty neat. Tim Weberding Wood Studio is cool. Met the attendant in there, Winter. Had a really nice conversation. It'd be a great gift shop. You know, those things are very detailed and make great, great gifts. Next stop is Ownby's Woodcraft. I love woodworking. Bears everywhere. Lots of really cool wooden things, even wooden fruit. Even have some old time books. Not sure what that gourd would be used for. Maybe a ladle or something? I don't know. But it isn't in the kitchen section. Along with some books. But there's aprons and other kitchen esque items. Now this is my favorite section. All these old tools. How cool. I might have to I might have to pick one of these up. Huh. Some of you might be like me out there and look for craftsman tools because you could take them back to Sears and exchange them for life. But this is an old one, original, made in the USA. They don't make these in the USA anymore. So these are kind of worth holding on to, especially for a dollar. It's, it's not a bad deal. But I've got like five of these, so I'm not gonna be buying this. Dad had the same hammer. I wonder what happened to that thing. I think my dad had about 50% of the tools that are here, exactly identical copies of these tools. Not a bad deal. This is a really cool shop. There's an overload of wooden bear items, but a lot of cool things in here. A lot of cool bowls and like kitchen items and games, wooden games for not just kids, but anybody. And a lot of books too. It's a cool store. 
handmade slingshots. Cool. I would have loved that when I was a kid. Across the street from the Glades Village Shopping Center is a statuary. When I was a little kid, my grandparents owned a small statuary in Springfield, Ohio. I've always thought this was cool. <laughs> this is the coolest concrete I've ever seen in my life. Very unique molds that they have. <laughs> Look at this one. <laughs> I love these things. If you want to, I'll take you in the back. And let you there! <laughs> I love the Sasquatches. Gnomes. Of course, they have to have gnomes, right? A ton of them. Right, literally a ton. <laughs> cool wizard. The Mother Mary section. And Jesus. A cool bench. I'm loving this statuary. This is so cool. I've never seen concrete like this before. I especially love these Sasquatches. <laughs> They're awesome. <laughs> it's so cool. All sports teams. Ah, Buckeyes. <laughs> this is the coolest piece of concrete I've ever seen. Sitting in the hand. It's actually very comfortable. Nice hand. If I were to buy these, I'd have to modify the left hand for sure. Have to let people know it belonged to me. <laughs> They're showing me how the concrete is made. This is neat. Wow. All your molds. Mm hmm. How <laughs> cool. But we keep them over. Right here's the core area, and then we store them all back here. Right back here comes with the metal molds versus those rubber molds out there. You can't put them together because the oil will eat away on the rubber. I so see. So we keep all the metal ones down here. Wow. Just a little bit of a mess right now. We just opened up two days ago, so we're trying to get everything ready. Wow. Whew. And then just go, it keeps on going and going. So you hand mix all the concrete mm -hmm. for these molds? We got, we got, we do, do like about a three to one with our a mix and just a little five gallon bucket and I'll take it with a drill and just put it in the drill and just wow. go into it. That's a lot of mixing you do, Oh man. yeah, it's a lot. Your grandfather built this. Mm -hmm. So you line the molds with oil. Oh yeah, and then we'll just put them up there so it drains all the way back into it. Get in here and I'll line them up, come through with an air gun and black them all out. Okay, it's a concrete painting booth. It's his being Jeff Francie. The founder of it all. The founder of it all. Seems like every shop I go in, they just keep getting better and better. This was an amazing stop. I could spend a lot more time just here at the statuary. Thanks for joining me today, friends, on this adventure to the Great Smoky Arts and Crafts community. I only made a few stops out of the several that were around, but I think it was worth it. If you're in the Gatlinburg Pigeon Forge area, definitely make your way out here to the craft community. It'll take you a whole day or longer to go through all these stops, but it's totally worth it. I appreciate you being here, friends, and I'll see you in the next video. Well, I'll see you later, Bigfoot. Or do you prefer Sasquatch? Do you want to say anything to the viewers out there before we leave? No? It's a little quiet. See you later, friends. See you later, Bigfoot. You do have some big feet. Kind of weird. See you, dude. See you next time.